In our Sunrise Smart Start, Raven Moody has pleaded guilty to murder, kidnapping, and criminal sexual conduct charges in the 2009 death of Brittany Drexel. This all happened in a South Carolina courtroom yesterday morning. Prosecutors say Moody entered the picture as a person of interest in 2011 when a family member of his came forward with information. According to Moody, he lured 17-year-old Drexel into his vehicle to party, and they then went to Moody's campsite. That's where authorities believe that Brittany died. The defendant was and is, a, and I'm sorry, a perverted sick monster that this should never happen to anyone ever again. My heart is broken, my life forever changed. So many lives destroyed by your selfish actions. Prosecutors say they'll never know exactly what happened that night. Brittany's family will be holding a celebration of her life Friday in the Myrtle Beach area to thank that community hey, for their support and for never giving up on solving Brittany's murder. Brittany's mom also blamed Moody for ruining the lives of other people who were falsely accused in her daughter's death, including Timothy Taylor, who was accused in 2016. Taylor's family sat behind Moody as he was sentenced to life in prison yesterday. Following the hearing, Timothy's mother, Joanne, said she's happy the Drexel family has received justice, but says her family's journey for justice won't end with Moody's plea. Forever be linked to Brittany Drexel because of a lie. As a result, Timothy and our family have endured years of pain and suffering. We lost friends. We lost jobs. We were followed. We were harassed. We received death threats, and this trauma will take years to heal. Part of the healing, she says, will come when those responsible for bringing Timothy's dame into the Drexel case acknowledge the mistake and utter the words that her son was falsely accused. The man accused of attacking gubernatorial candidate Congressman Lee Zeldin at a local VFW in July will be released next week under strict conditions. David Yakobonis has been in jail since the incident. Yesterday, the Army veteran was able to get into a PTSD and alcohol recovery program with the VA. He will also have to wear two different monitors, one a GPS and the other that will track his alcohol intake. The Kirk Ashton trial could be wrapping up this morning. Ashton, the former Northwood Elementary School principal in Hilton, is facing allegations of sexual abuse reported by more than 20 students. Prosecutors finished with their last witness, then rested their case yesterday. And this morning, the defense will have the opportunity to call witnesses. If they don't, then closing arguments will begin. All right, let's check in now with meteorologist James Gilbert. James, hopefully today is a good morning for a morning walk, or you might need the umbrella. Uh, this is the morning walk where you go if you have to go on a you morning walk. Like if you have an animal, right? Yeah, you yeah. To get them uh, some time outside. Yeah, exactly. If it's an optional choice for you, maybe you can wait for another day. Not the prettiest to start. Uh, don't let it stop you. Uh, just make sure you dress for it. That's all. Winter jacket worthy. Uh, maybe watch out for a light drizzle here and there. It's just barely worth the umbrella, but no, I wouldn't uh, blame you if you did want to bring it out with you. A little breezy there with the southwest wind at nine miles per hour. Not much of an improvement. We are well below average, but we flipped the script. We'll look at the extended forecast as well as see what's going on at the bus stop at the end of the show. Casey, okay, email. All right, James, thank you. Taking one last look at the roads this morning. Things are still looking really good out there. No new accidents to report. Just be aware if it is drizzling where you are, there might be some wet roads. So take it easy this morning. A recent study shows chemical hair straightening is linked to uterine cancer, and black women are at an even higher risk due to using those chemicals more often. News 8's Chitara Marsh has been following up on this study by speaking with local experts. She joins us now in studio with more. Chitara, good morning. Casey, Amel, good morning. In a study led by the National Institute of Health Sciences, roughly 33,000 U.S. women between the ages of 35 and 74 participated in an 11-year study. 378 uterine cancer cases were found. 
Uterine cancer accounts for 3% of all new cancer cases, but it is the most common cancer of the female reproductive system, with 65,950 estimated new cases in the year 2022. Studies have shown that rates of uterine cancer have been rising in the United States, particularly among black women. Executive Director of the Breast Cancer Coalition, Holly Anderson, says at the local level, she, along with many others, are actively working to fix things. We at the Breast Cancer Coalition are working very hard on what's called the safe cosmetics and personal care products at, this, at New York State level. Um, we've made a lot of progress in the Assembly, uh, a little less progress in the Senate, but we're working really hard on this legislation that would educate women um, and require manufacturers to actually label the product with what the, um, con the chemicals of concern are. Anderson says she is also in a focus group of women who are having these discussions on what could be done in the community to keep women heard and safe. In the studio, Jatira Marsh, News 8. All right, Jatira, thank you. If you're interested in joining that group to learn more, you can find out how to do so over on our website, rochesterfirst.com. A quick COVID update this morning. Governor Kathy Hochul announcing the bivalent COVID boosters are now available for children ages 5 to 11 in New York. This comes after the FDA updated its guidance on the new boosters to include this age group. Hochul says she's hoping this will help protect families against new strains as we head into the colder months. The women-led construction of the National Women's Hall of Fame entered a new phase as organizers broke ground on the hall's second floor. It will be completely transformed, becoming the new home of the actual Hall of Fame. The building's architecture, including the spiral staircase and limestone exterior, will be restored as part of the project. And some modern elements, like a new elevator, will be added. And as we mentioned, the folks making this all happen are women from LaChase Construction Services. You have a chance to score discounted tickets to see Hamilton the Musical. The Rochester Broadway Theater League will be hosting a lottery. Each person is el eligible to win two tickets for $10 each. The lottery opens tomorrow at 10 in the morning and will close at noon next Thursday. These tickets are intended for the Hamilton performances scheduled November 1st to the 6th at RBTL. Another lottery for tickets to shows will be held on November 8th to the 13th, and that will be held next Friday. To enter this lottery, download the official Hamilton app on your smartphone. This is your shot. The travel website Expedia has released its annual air travel hacks report. After a summer of expensive flights, many Americans are wondering what their holiday flights are going to look like. Some reports indicate Thanksgiving and Christmas airfares will be at their highest in five years. The annual report says the best day to fly is the Friday before Thanksgiving or the day of. For Christmas, it's the weekend before. Another tip, book your flights on Sundays to save about 5% on domestic flights and 15% on international flights. And lastly, try to book domestic flights one month out and international flights six months out to get the best deals. And here's what some folks might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. The first Native American woman in space saying she was overwhelmed by the beauty and delicacy of Mother Earth and is channeling positive energy as her five-month mission gets underway. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is a member of the Wallachi of the Round Valley Indian Tribes in Northern California. She took a dream catcher her mother gave her as a childhood gift, something she holds dear that she says gives her strength during challenging times. What a beautiful memory there and love seeing firsts happen. Yeah. Can't really think of something better to take. She really nailed it on that one. Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Neat to see. Yeah. I think we can all dream and uh, hopefully it looks like she's uh, really capitalizing on those dreams. Yeah. Yes. Uh, nice to see that. Maybe we're thinking about uh, getting on the bus this morning. It's cold. Uh, we've got some light drizzle out there to start off the day. Sunrise not till 730. We've got about 30 more minutes until we start to see a little bit of glow on the horizon. Mostly cloudy skies, still chance for a shower or two, mid 40s for this afternoon. Eight day forecast, we'll finish with this. Friday looking improved. It will start off similar in temperatures, but everything's different by the afternoon. The sun comes out, the temperatures warm up, and then we really get rewarded uh, by Saturday and Sunday. We've got numbers climbing into the 70s. It's amazing, we're just really gonna flip the script. 
so long past couple days has been cloudy, cool, wet, and then we're just going to go right to sunny and near 70 by Saturday, Sunday.